Hi guys, this is the fourth video of that uh, foam plane building series and I know that this has taken forever and a lot of people have asked me to make the fourth video I know the video would get so much positive feedback so here it is, the fourth video this one is going to be a little shorter I think and it's going to be installing carbon tubes. That's all it's going to be in this video. Um, because I'm going to show you different techniques and everything. So basically, you have your carbon tube and your foam. What we're going to do is we're going to have to mark the length. So I'm going to cut this carbon tube into three pieces and show you three different techniques. So first of all, if this is my plan and my carbon tube needs to go like from here to here, you just need to measure it. And then I always take some blue masking tape, cut it and rip it into a little piece. And I'm just going to put one here. And then like one down here. And now, when I cut it, I'm going to try and cut it in the middle of the tape. So what I would do then is put it here and then draw my mark there. Because that way you can see your mark when you do it on the masking tape. And the masking tape kind of holds the ends together while you cut it. So I'm just going to make two marks. Okay. So now, you can see the mark on the blue tape. So now I'm ready to cut my carbon tube. Um, so I'm going to show you two different ways to cut it. The first way being a bandsaw, and the second way being a Dremel tool. So what I'm going to do with the bandsaw is hold the carbon tube like this, keep my hands away from the blade, and then just slowly rotate it while I push it in. This will kind of cut all the way around as it pushes in, and that'll give it a nice cut. And I'd practice once or twice, because if you just take it and go right into the plate, it'll crack your carbon tube, and you'll get cracks all the way down. So that's not going to work, so I'm just going to slowly rotate it and take my time on this step. So that cut it looks good and when you do um, cut um, carbon tubes it's best to wear a um, respirator I mean, you don't have to but they're the carbon dust you don't really want to inhale that stuff and then always wear safety glasses when you use any power tools so now I have this piece and I'm going to show you cutting this one and I'm going to do that on my Dremel. I have a Dremel here with a cutting wheel and this is a really really tiny cutting wheel. I wore it down yesterday. Um, and then I'm going to set it to about four. You really don't need, you really need a lower speed like medium low. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just keep even pressure on it and all I'm going to do is just rotate it. So here we go. So then you'll probably get something like this. And then just break that apart and you have your carbon tubes all cut. So there are the two different ways. If you have a bandsaw, use that. If you have a Dremel, use that. It doesn't really matter. Just, just showing you two different ways to do that thing. And now the next step is cutting the slot to put the carbon tube. And there are two different ways to do that. So I'm going to show you both ways, the easier way first. So to cut the slot, this is kind of, I'd say, the conventional way. 
you're going to need, of course, your carpet tube, the foam, a pen, a straight edge, and then a sharp X-Acto knife. So, what we're going to do is get the carbon tube where you want it, and then just hold it in place there. Then I'm going to take a pen and draw a little mark on each side of the carbon tube. So do you see the two little marks there? Now I know where I'm going to cut my slot and how wide the slot should be. So I'm going to cut this side of the slot first. I'm going to hold my ruler or straight edge pretty far back. And then I'm going to test this and I'm going to hold my X-Acto knife at about a 45. So I'm going to have it like this. And then the distance away depends on how tall your straight edge is. So when I hold it at a 45, the tip of the exact knife should be at the tip of that. So then I'm just going to stick it in and pull straight back, trying to keep the same depth. Because you don't want to change the depth of your cut. You want to just keep it all the same. So now I'm going to do, slide this back a little bit, and I'm going to put my ruler so that the edge of the ruler is at the tip of those blue lines. Like that. And then I'm just going to do the exact same cut just on the other side. Trying to have the same depth and the same angle. Now, you can see both cut lines. And what I can do now is just take my X-Acto knife, cut there, cut there and out comes a little strip and I have a nice slot for my carbon tube. So now the carbon tube I can what I'll do is take it and take my finger and push it down and go down the slot. Take my finger push it down and go down the slot. And then you're doing this just so that you ensure that it fits. And then I can slide my carbon tube in so that it's flush and we're done with cutting out that one. So next is the more difficult way to cut out slots but I really like that way. It's a lot cleaner some, and um, normally I use this method with the X-Acto knife when I use Depron and for EPP I usually use this other method that I'm about to show you now. So here is a piece of 6mm EPP and the carbon tube I want to install into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like this. I'm just going to hold it and use the same method. Take a pen, make two lines, just like we did with the other method. And I'm still going to use my straight edge. I'm also going to grab a soldering iron. <coughs> so here's the soldering iron that I use. And if you look, this is kind of the hard part about this setup. Is what you need to do is take a uh, take an old soldering iron, unscrew the tip so that there's a hole and then find a screw to screw into that hole and then cut off the tip of the screw at the length you want. This is definitely the harder method to get the setup done but once you have this soldering iron you should be good. Now what the thing to check is that when I hold my thing up to here I'm gonna set this on the foam, get this really hot and then put it like this and then just pull all the way through the foam and it's just going to melt a nice slot and then the depth is controlled by how much this thing sticks out and then make sure when you do the depth that you include the ruler so it's going to go in that deep so I'm ready to get started and when you do this make sure to wear a respirator because the EPP when you're melting it sometimes it starts smoking and it smells really awful so let's get started I gotta warm up my soldering iron 
as a note when you do this, you don't want your soldering iron to be at the full temperature because at the full temperature it, it kind of just burns the EPP. Um, so if you have it at like 75% the temperature of max of what it heats up to, it'll work quite a bit better. So I'm just going to wait a minute for that to heat up. So here we go. Here's the soldering iron. It's at a good temperature. It was a little too hot, so I just unplugged it. So now I'm going to make the slot. there is the slot. It's a really nice looking slot and then my rod just fits perfectly right in there like that. That is a great fit and just um, to tell you that method of melting a slot that does not work with Depron because um, once you make the slot the slot will like kind of expand and it turns kind of blackish, yellowish so just use that for EPP, and I think that's the best thing to use for EPP, so you have a nice perfect slot. Now, we have our two different methods, like that, and now we're going to show you two different methods to glue them in. Okay, here's method one on the Depron. Just use normal CA glue. Just go along each side. Um, I don't use this method too much. I prefer the other method I'm going to show you in a minute, but they both work just fine. So that that's it for gluing it in with CA glue and just go over it with kicker. And that's all that there is to that method, just glue it in with CA. I prefer the next method a little more. You can see the glue's all dried on that and it's just a nice way to do it and this usually isn't the way I do it and the way I usually do it is with a hot glue, hot, hot melt glue gun. This is like the cheapest hot melt glue gun you can get. It's really tiny low temp 120 volt hot melt glue gun. Um, super easy um, so basically, use the same method with the CA, and what I'm going to do is just, let's see if I can do this over here, go along the, I'm going to hold it, and then go along the left side, and I need a new glue stick. So I got my new glue stick, and I'm just going to go along the sides. Get a nice bead of glue on each side. We go around it, kind of smooth it down. And there we go. This is the method I usually do. It's a little faster, I think. A little easier. Um, for EPP, I don't use any CA because the EPP is soft and the CA kind of cracks. So on EPP, I use hot melt glue and welder's glue. But really, pretty much EPP is all hot glue for me. Um, <laughs> so that's the two methods. Personally, I use, I just cut out my carbon tubes with the Dremel and then glue them in with hot melt glue. I think that's the easiest way for me. And it works just fine. So you can do it really any way you want using these methods or any other methods you know. And those are the best way to get carbon tubes installed into your airplane. So, um, next video, I guess, is just going to be, I'm going to say mounting the motor. Okay, thanks for watching, um, and good night.